How to broil a steak. If you love a good steak, this is a simple way to cook one that maximizes the flavor. You will need a broiler, oil, a broiling pan, salt and pepper, a steak, and a roasting pan. Step one, heat the broiler to its hottest temperature setting and brush oil on the broiling pan. Step two, add salt and pepper to the steak. Broiling brings out the natural flavor of a steak, so salt and pepper are all you need to season it. Step three, place the steak on the pan and put the pan about six inches from the heat source. Step four, broil the steak for four to six minutes on each side, depending on how well done you like it. Do not open the door to peek at the steak. You want the steak to be cooking at a high and consistent temperature. Step five, take the steak out and turn off the broiler. Let it rest in the pan so the juices can settle and the meat can cool. After five minutes, serve and enjoy. Did you know? London broil refers to any of four beef steaks that are often on the tough side. Flank steak, sirloin, top round, and bottom round. To cook London broil. This classic way to prepare juicy steak will have your mouth watering in no time. You will need two to two and a quarter pounds of London broil, one and a quarter inches thick, a quarter cup of olive oil, a quarter cup of fresh lemon juice, six large garlic cloves, two tablespoons of Dijon mustard, one tablespoon of chopped fresh rosemary, two teaspoons of lemon zest, salt and pepper, Bernays sauce, a vegetable, and a potato. Step one, place the steak in a heavy, large, resealable plastic bag. Step two, make the marinade by pureeing the remaining ingredients in a blender or food processor and season the mixture with salt and pepper. Step three, pour the marinade into the bag with the beef and seal the bag. Let the meat marinate at room temperature for two hours or in the refrigerator for six hours, occasionally turning the bag. Step four, preheat your oven broiler or heat your grill to medium-high heat and then broil or grill the steak to your desired doneness. Cook five minutes per side for a rare steak, eight minutes per side for medium, and 10 to 12 minutes per side for a well-done steak. Step five, transfer your steak to a platter and let it stand for 15 minutes. Then slice it thinly against the grain and serve it with Bernays sauce, a vegetable, and a potato. Bon appetit. Did you know? An estimated 60 million Americans use their backyard barbecue grills on the 4th of July. How to cook prime rib. Prepare prime rib the right way and you'll have a tender, delectable roast your dinner guests are sure to enjoy. You will need a nine pound prime rib roast, paper towels, butter, a knife, a roasting pan, a meat thermometer, drippings, optional, a butcher. Step one, select a top quality grade of beef for your prime rib. USDA Prime is best, followed by USDA Choice and USDA Select. The better the grade, the more flavorful and tender the roast will be. Ask the butcher to trim excess fat, leaving a layer to protect and baste the roast as it cooks. Step two, let the roast come to room temperature. Pat it dry with a paper towel. Step three, rub some butter on the cut ends. Cut half inch deep slits on the top and sides of the roast and cover it with seasoning rub. Step four, Place the roast in a heavy metal roasting pan, fat side facing up. Step five, place the roast in an oven that has been preheated to 450 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes and then reduce the temperature to 325 degrees for the remainder of the cooking time. Baste it every half hour. After two hours of cooking time at 325 degrees, the roast should be medium rare. Step six, insert a meat thermometer in the roast about an hour and a half into cooking time. When the thermometer reaches 120 degrees, rare, 140 degrees, medium, or 160 degrees, well done, remove the roast from the oven and cover it with foil. Let the meat rest for 30 minutes. Step seven, carve the roast with a long, sharp knife and serve the slices with small dishes of drippings for dipping. Did you know? Lowry's Restaurant, which specializes in prime rib, became a beacon for Hollywood glitterati when it opened in Beverly Hills in 1938. To make bouffe bourguignon. This French stew, first made famous in America by Julia Child, is the perfect dinner for those cold winter nights. You will need a quarter pound of thick sliced bacon, three pounds of chuck stew beef, salt and pepper, one third cup of flour, one to two tablespoons of vegetable oil, six to seven tablespoons of butter, a half cup of brandy, four stems of fresh parsley, one stalk of celery without leaves, four sprigs of fresh thyme, two cloves, two bay leaves, two medium onions, three large garlic cloves, two carrots, one tablespoon of tomato paste, one bottle of dry red wine, 
two to three cups of beef stock, one pound of small boiling onions, one pound of sliced white mushrooms, and two to three pounds of new potatoes. Equipment, kitchen string. Step one, cook the bacon in boiling salted water in the saucepan for three minutes, then drain and set aside. Step two, pat the beef dry with paper towels and season it with salt and pepper. Then coat the beef with the flour in two batches by shaking them together in a one quart plastic bag. Step three, brown the beef in one tablespoon oil plus one and a half tablespoons of the butter over medium high heat in the stew pot. Then move the browned beef to the mixing bowl. Do not overcrowd the beef. Brown in two or three batches, adding oil if needed. Step four, pour out any remaining oil and add the brandy to the pot. Boil the brandy over high heat for one minute, stirring constantly while scraping the browned bits. Then pour the deglazing liquid over the beef. Step five, strip the leaves from the parsley stems and set them aside. With kitchen string, tie the stems, celery, thyme, cloves, and bay leaves together. Stick the cloves into the celery stalk so they won't fall out. Step six, melt one tablespoon of butter in the pot. Add the boiled bacon and cook for two to three minutes. Finally, chop the onions and garlic and cut the carrot into quarter inch slices. Saute the vegetables for five minutes until the onions are soft. Step seven, stir in the tomato paste and cook for one minute. Then add the wine, tied herbs, and the meat with deglazing liquid. Add enough stock to just cover the meat. Simmer for three and a half to four hours, partially covered until tender. Step eight, lightly brown the boiling onions with one tablespoon of butter in the saucepan. Season with salt and pepper. Add two cups of water and simmer, partially covered, for 15 minutes until they're tender. Then reduce for another five to 10 minutes. Step nine, saute the mushrooms in one tablespoon of butter for eight minutes until the liquid evaporates. Then add the new potatoes, season with salt and pepper, and boil until tender. Step 10, season the boiled potatoes with the remaining butter and the reserved parsley leaves. Stir the onions and mushrooms into the stew. Remove the tied herbs and skim off any fat. Serve with the potatoes. Bon appetit! Did you know? Before she became one of the world's best-known chefs, Julia Child aspired to be a spy. How to make meatballs. You don't have to be a top chef to make meatballs. Just follow the steps in this recipe and you'll have the perfect pasta accompaniment in no time. You will need one egg, a sandwich roll, one pound of ground beef, two teaspoons of minced garlic, some coarse salt and ground pepper, one and three quarter teaspoons of dried oregano, one teaspoon of olive oil, 28 ounces of crushed canned tomatoes, 15 ounces of whole peeled canned tomatoes, and a pinch of sugar. Equipment, a food processor. Optional, a half a cup of breadcrumbs. Step one, preheat your oven to 400 degrees. While it's heating, lightly beat the egg. Step two, tear the roll into pieces and pulse it in the food processor until you have fine breadcrumbs. Then, toss them in the bowl with one third of a cup of water. Substitute breadcrumbs if you prefer. Step three, add the ground beef, egg, one teaspoon of the garlic, two teaspoons of salt, a quarter teaspoon of pepper, and three quarters of teaspoon of the oregano, mixing until everything is combined. Then, form the mixture into meatballs. Step four, heat the oil in a heavy pot over medium high heat, swirling it around to coat the pot. Then add the meatballs, cooking them until they're browned and turning them occasionally. Step five, break up the whole tomatoes and add them with the crushed tomatoes to the pot. Add the remaining garlic and oregano along with a pinch of sugar and season the sauce with salt and pepper. Step six, bring the sauce to a boil and then reduce the heat for a rapid simmer. Cook the meatballs in the sauce for 15 minutes until they're cooked through. Enjoy over the pasta of your choice. Did you know? According to the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, over a 20-year period, the average portion size for spaghetti and meatballs went from one cup spaghetti with sauce and three small meatballs to two cups spaghetti with sauce and three large meatballs. A difference of 525 calories. How to prepare a traditional roast beef. Make this juicy roast the centerpiece of your next holiday dinner, or just treat your family to a really nice meal. You will need a five to six pound boneless top sirloin beef roast, salt, freshly ground black pepper, a fourth cup of olive oil, 
six to eight garlic cloves, equipment, a Dutch oven or deep skillet, a roasting pan with a rack, a meat thermometer, and a cutting board. Step one, remove the roast from the fridge about an hour before cooking so it comes to room temperature. Step two, preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Trim any fat that's thicker than a half inch. Leave the rest, it will keep the beef moist. Step three, sprinkle salt and freshly ground black pepper over the entire roast according to taste. Step four, heat the olive oil and garlic in a Dutch oven or a deep skillet. Step five, brown the entire roast about four minutes per side, then transfer it fat side up to a roasting pan with a rack, put it in the oven. Step six, check the roast with a meat thermometer after it's been roasting for approximately 70 minutes. Continue checking once every 10 minutes until the roast reaches an internal temperature of 130 degrees. Let it roast longer if you want the meat cooked beyond medium rare. Step seven, remove the roast from the oven and transfer it to a cutting board. Let it rest 20 minutes before carving. A six pound roast will provide about 24 three ounce servings. Enjoy. Did you know, the average American eats almost three and a half pounds of beef per month according to the National Cattlemen's Beef Association.